Hey everyone, and welcome to a new video, or a not-so-new video, if you're watching this in the future. Today we're going to be looking at how I made this picture look like this, with an Inktober-inspired post-processing shader in Unity. Since this effect is of my own creation, and not an implementation of someone else's work, I kind of needed to have a general idea of how I wanted it to work. The plan here was to try and detect the edges of an image and separate them so that the image looks like a sketch. Then I wanted to layer these edges on top of a stippled render of the original image, and this would ideally make the image look like an ink drawing that was sketched and then shaded. To illustrate this in individual shader passes, the first pass is edge detection, the second pass is stippling, the third pass will combine these two buffers, and then the fourth pass will color it all. So with a plan figured out, let's look at finding the image edges. Edge detection is a very difficult task in the context of image effects, and you may ask yourself, Ace Rolla, what do you mean? The edge is right there. And you're right, it's very obvious for us as humans what is an edge and what isn't, but image effects operate on a per pixel basis. So to get a real judgment of what an edge looks like to a computer, we need to zoom all the way in. Once again, even looking at just these six pixels, the edge is obvious, but this is rarely what images actually look like. What if the pixels looked like this instead? Is this an edge or not? And that's a hard question to answer, and precisely why edge detection is a non-trivial task. When I was starting, I tried to make my own little edge detector using contrast thresholding. Essentially, if the contrast between two pixels exceeded a given threshold, then I would say that's an edge. And this didn't work at all, or at least not well enough to be actually useful. So I started researching real-world edge detection algorithms, and I came across one known as the Canny Edge Detector. Canny Edge Detection is a five-pass effect, which are as follows. 1. We blur the image to smooth it and remove any noise. 2. We find the intensity gradient of the image. 3 is magnitude thresholding, 4 is double thresholding, and 5 is edge tracking by hysteresis. And there's a lot of really complicated words here, but I promise the concepts are really simple. We're going to completely ignore the first pass because I didn't want to blur my images as video game renders don't have the problem that it is trying to solve. So my implementation is a 4 pass effect. Finding the intensity gradient of an image is a really fancy way of saying that it is calculating the change in intensity of an image. Where there is a high change in intensity, there could be an edge, such as a shift from black to white. This works by convolving two matrices around a pixel, then taking the magnitude of these two values. The matrices you use depend on the implementation, so I personally used the Sobel operator, which is the industry standard. Applying this to our example image makes it look like so. The white areas are where there is a high change in intensity. The next pass, which is magnitude thresholding, keeps every pixel that has the largest or equivalent gradient magnitude compared to its neighbors, and this thins a lot of the potential edges down and makes it look like this, which I think actually looks really cool. The next pass is a double thresholding that is parameterized by the programmer, and optimal thresholds are kind of unique to individual images, so you have to play around with it a bit. The way it works is we have a high threshold value and a low threshold value. If the intensity of a pixel is higher than the high threshold, then it is marked as a strong edge. If the intensity is between the two values, it is a weak edge, and if the intensity of a pixel is lower than the low threshold, it's removed entirely. The final pass, which is edge tracking by hysteresis, takes the weak and strong edge pixels from before and it removes every weak edge pixel that is not surrounded by at least one strong edge pixel. And that's it, we now have an image with everything except the detected edges removed. Obviously it's not perfect, and it kind of reminds me of that scene from Spongebob where he draws like a, like a really complicated face and then erases all of it and then we get a perfect circle. But the next thing I wanted to do with the edges was blur them a bit so that it looks like the ink is bleeding into the background. This is a simple pass, I just had every pixel become a weighted average of its neighbors so that it slightly blurs the whole image but maintains the strong edge lines. 
With our line buffer complete, we can now look into stippling. I'm not going to make this very complicated, but there's a lot of really cool, intricate ways to stipple images with stuff like Voronoi diagrams. But I'm going to keep it simple and use blue noise dithering. Blue noise, in the context of computer graphics, refers to any noise with few low frequency components and no concentrated spikes in energy. Basically, it's like equally distributed noise, and it visually looks like this as a texture. I'm a busy boy, so I didn't want to write my own script for generating blue noise, so I used one of the many free blue noise textures on the internet. The way the stippling works is that we sample the blue noise, and then we sample the luminance of the image, and if the luminance is above that noise value, then we keep it, otherwise we discard it. And when applied to the image, it looks like so. Now we can combine our two effects. Drum roll, please. And... It looks like shit! The blur I put on the lines contrasts heavily with the stippling, the lines are too thick, and the stippling feels way too dense. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. I gotta go now, and I hope I see you next time. Okay, just kidding. We'll fix the effect. Fixing the lines is easy. All we have to do is remove the blur pass and thin the lines down a bit. I actually had a pass that was thickening the lines that I didn't mention earlier, so I'll just remove that too. Next, I want to make the stippling a lower resolution. This can be achieved by multiplying the UV coordinates of the pixel by a decimal, so that it, when it samples the blue noise texture, it functionally enlarges the noise as it tiles across the image. To demonstrate, here is normal UV coordinates for sampling, and here is UV coordinates multiplied by 0.5. The stipple effect becomes much lower resolution, and in my opinion, it looks a bit more organic. There's one last change I want to make, which I came up with while I was at work. I want to modify the line width based on the luminance of the image at that point, so brighter edges have thinner lines, and darker edges have thicker lines. With this change to the effect, I think it makes the lines look much more interesting. With that, the effect is complete, I think. All that's left is to color it. I went into Photoshop and I made a simple paper and ink texture. I took an off-white color for the paper, and I applied a little bit of noise to it, and I did the same thing for the ink, but with a really dark, warmer color. Sampling these textures accordingly makes renders now look like this, which I think gives off the vibe of paper and ink. Overall, I'm pretty happy with how this effect turned out. It is written as a post-processing shader, so it can be used for both video games and as a general image effect. To show you how it would look in a video game, I applied it to one of my old screenshots from Cyberpunk 2077, and I think it looks pretty good. Please let me know what you think in the comments. Anyways, I've got something special planned for the next video, so be sure to subscribe so you know when that video comes out, also, check out my Twitter for project updates. But I've got to go now, so have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you next time.